Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are going to be making this beautiful black plum lipstick. It's a lovely, cool, ruddy red shade that's perfect for autumn. I'm also wearing it on my cheeks as well as my lips. And I find that you can blend it up to get higher or lower coverage. And the color actually varies a surprising amount depending on if you just use like a little bit or if you use quite a lot, which makes it wonderfully versatile. To get this color blend, we're going to be using a mixture of red iron oxide, blue ultramarine, and titanium dioxide. Now, blue ultramarine is not approved for lip use by the FDA, but it is approved by the European Union. And given the EU's tendency to have much more stringent safety standards than the FDA, I've decided to go with the EU on this one. If you don't want to use blue ultramarine, you could use a blue lake dye, or you can look for the bluish tinted red iron oxide and just use all of that instead of the blend of the red iron oxide and the blue ultramarine. Something you should know about this lipstick is that it does take a day or two to really come to a full lipsticky consistency. So when you're popping the caps on your tubes or your jars, don't worry if it seems alarmingly soft. It will continue to harden up for the next day or two. Making lipstick is pretty similar to making lip balm. We're basically just going to melt our base ingredients together and then stir in our pigments until they're very thoroughly blended. And that is the time consuming part here, is stirring in your pigments forever and ever and ever and ever until you have a thorough even color blend. And I'll show you how to make sure that you do have an even color blend. And then we'll pour it into our tubes and then we'll clean up. And don't worry, I'll give you some cleanup tips too because lipstick can make a huge mess in your kitchen. <laughs> All right, what are you waiting for? Let's go make some lipstick. We'll start by combining the ingredients for our lipstick base. So you're going to need four grams of cocoa butter, seven grams of mango butter, nine grams of safflower oil, or you could use sunflower oil or sweet almond oil or jojoba oil instead, and one gram of magnesium stearate. Now this is for slip and adhesion, and I really don't recommend removing it. It helps keep the pigments that we're going to be adding later from feeling skitty on your lips and helps the lipstick stay on. So you'll notice that this is not a heat resistant glass measuring tub. And that's because the melting point of magnesium stearate is high enough that trying to melt it in a water bath is a giant pain in the butt, especially if you live at a relatively high elevation like I do. So we're going to be melting this over direct heat instead of in a water bath. So you need to be careful to keep a very close eye on it so that you don't scorch your oils. So what you're gonna see is you're gonna see everything melt, but it's still gonna look a little bit cloudy. And that's the magnesium stearate that hasn't quite melted yet. So when you end up with an amber liquid that is transparent, then everything is melted. So what I'm doing right now is stirring it to break up the clumps of the magnesium stearate and sort of wet it out into the liquid oil here. This will help it melt faster and more uniformly. The reason we aren't adding the beeswax right now is because beeswax discolors if heated to a point that is still lower than the melting point for magnesium stearate. So we're going to melt all of this together, remove it from the heat, add the beeswax, and then put it back over the heat over a lower temperature so that the beeswax doesn't discolor. It doesn't really matter if the beeswax does discolor because it's purely a cosmetic thing and you honestly can't even notice once you've added the colorants. But I'm doing it this way because I'm a little picky. Okay, so that magnesium stearate is blended in there pretty well, so I'm going to go put this on my stovetop over low heat and keep a close eye on it, stirring it relatively frequently until I have a transparent golden liquid. So I wanted to show you what it looked like when the magnesium stearate hasn't melted, but everything else has. And you can still see that it's a little bit cloudy. So I'm gonna go put this back on the heat for a bit longer until that cloudiness dissipates. You may see a bit of foam and that's totally fine, but cloudiness is no good. And there we go, fully melted. It's a fairly subtle difference, but it's an important one. So now we're ready to add our beeswax and our pigments. So we're going to add four grams of beeswax. And in here we have our pigments. 
So the white stuff is 1 16th a teaspoon of titanium dioxide. The blue stuff is 1 8th a teaspoon of blue ultramarine. And the red stuff is half a teaspoon of red iron oxide. So you can see that the residual heat from this has totally melted the beeswax without us having to pop this back on the stove. So I'm stirring away here by smushing the flexible bottom of the spatula against the bottom of our pan here, scraping down the edges and targeting those clumps and breaking them up. So streaking it up the side here. The blue ultramarine is a weird one. It can be a little bit resistant to blending it into things. It will eventually go down, but you'll see there's pretty noticeable bits of it floating on top, whereas the titanium dioxide and the red iron oxide have sort of behaved and have blended down quite a bit faster. So when you get to a point where the lipstick looks fairly well blended, it's good to tip it to the back bit and start running your spatula across the bottom of your pan. And that's where you'll start, start to notice streaks of pigment if your blending hasn't been very, or as thorough as you think it has been. So you can usually see titanium dioxide because it's a, it's a tricky one to fully incorporate by hand here. And so any white streaks you're seeing, that's a bit of unblended titanium dioxide. So give it a stir here and try streaking again at another point here. All right, that's looking pretty good, pretty uniform. A Little bit of white there, but not much. We're also waiting for this lipstick to get a bit of viscosity going on, cool down enough that the beeswax is actually helping it thicken, because that thickness will keep all of these pigments in suspension so they don't settle out to the bottom of our lipsticks once we pour them into our containers. So that's pretty well blended, so I'm going to remove the dish towel and set it on the countertop here so that the coolness of the countertop can help it thicken up a bit faster. Continuing to streak across the bottom here. As it starts to thicken, you'll be able to see the streaks across the bottom without having to tip it to its side. Oop, there's a bit of blue you can see streaking out. Blendy, 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 get in there. Right, we're getting pretty close to pour time. It's starting to thicken up faster. You can see that when I drag the spatula across the bottom, you can actually sort of see the bottom of the pot, whereas before it was so liquid that that just didn't happen. And you can also see that we're not really seeing any color streaks anymore, which means that we've got a good even color blend. If you wanted to add any essential oils, now would be the time to add a couple drops of, say, peppermint or maybe some benzoin. I'm going to leave mine unscented, though. And now we're ready to pour into our containers, and this part's going to go pretty quick. So I've got one little glass one there, and then a couple lip balm tubes. These little glass ones have been, they're from New Directions, but they've been discontinued. So this is sort of one of my, my last ones, which I'm hoarding. And a quick 
core and onto the tubes. See, I have probably let this get a little bit thick for pouring into tubes. So I'm just gonna pull these to the side, these empty ones, and give these ones that I'm filling a wrap on my countertop to knock the lipstick down into them. And we're probably gonna go have to pop this back on the stove for a couple seconds to loosen it back up. Oop, no you don't. There we go. I knew that wasn't full. You too, you lying little lipstick tube. All right, I'm gonna go pop this back on the stove top for just like an instant, just to loosen it up, giving it a really quick stir while I do. Okay, we're loosened back up and ready to keep pouring. This part, you gotta move pretty quick. Oh, I gotta go back to the stove already. I am regretting using tubes for this video. All right, well, I'm gonna call that a day for pouring and leave those to set up. So it's been about 15 minutes and everything is set up more or less. So I'm gonna pop some lids on these. And as you can see, lipstick is messy. So once we get these out of the way, we'll chat cleanup tips. So when it comes to cleanup, paper towel is your best friend when you're making greasy, colorful messes like this. You will use a lot of it. And I know it's not that environmentally friendly, but I was just, I was running so much water down the drain and using so, so, so much detergent that honestly, I think this is not an awful trade-off. Just make use of your Costco membership, <laughs> buy yourself a package of paper towel the size of your sofa. Ah, it's everywhere. Oh, this is, this is not my favorite part about making makeup. All right, more, more, more. Yeah, if you can pour a little bit more cleanly, you will really appreciate whatever efforts you take to do that at this point of the process. Uh, pouring tubes while the mixture's a little bit hotter will definitely improve that experience. All right, that actually, the pot turned out pretty well. This is why I usually put my lipstick in pods, but I know a lot of people prefer it in tubes. So when it comes to this, disgusting mess, very colorful mess. Tip number one is, you know, actually get as much of your lipstick into a usable container as humanly possible, which I have not done here. But what you want to do is get, sort of in theory, your the inside of your pot or your container would look sort of, you know, like that, and you would not have this great big clod. So I'm, I'm gonna put the clod with the paper towels and we're just gonna set that aside. That's, once we give the spatula a really good wipe down, it'll actually clean out pretty well with um, with just some hot water and some detergent and a sponge or a scrubby stick, and then probably a trip through the dishwasher as well. But you do wanna get most of the color off because your dishwasher is just not up to that task, unfortunately, or at least mine isn't. You're gonna grab more paper towel and wipe out the inside of your containers. So I'm gonna put these aside. Ugh. So much, so much. 
All right, and honestly, once your pots are down to about that, where you can't even really see much of anything, they'll clean out really, really beautifully if you just scrub them out by hand. I also have a great cleaning powder recipe on my blog, which I will link to in the description box below. And if you combine that with boiling water, that'll fix pretty much anything. And there you go, you just made some black plum lipstick, perfect color for fall. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and check the description box below for the full written recipe with the amounts in both metric and imperial and links to everything I use in this video, both equipment and ingredients. See you next time.